What are some of the weirdest places cash was found? Let's get started with... Number five, the storage safe. In a stroke of incredible luck, an unnamed buyer of a storage unit purchased from Storage Wars star Dan Dotson stumbled upon a remarkable find that forever changed their life. Dan Dotson, an auctioneer and co-star of the popular A&E show Storage Wars, has been running the successful American auctioneer since 1974. He's an expert in auctioning off unclaimed and abandoned storage lockers. The buyer purchased a storage unit for 500 bucks, which had a safe inside. It's common to find safes in storage units, but they're almost always empty. This is one of those almost always times. The buyer cracked the safe and discovered seven and a half million dollars inside. News of the discovery reached the original owners of the unit. Seeking to reclaim their lost fortune, they reached out to the new owner through their lawyer. And that's the thing with our personal information all over the web. The old owner's lawyer most likely was able to easily find the new owner's information because most people's data is all over the internet. And that's where our sponsor for today's video, Incogni, comes in. You're able to say goodbye to intrusive ads, spam emails, and data breaches with Incogni. Incogni is a revolutionary service that puts you back in control of your data by proactively contacting data brokers on your behalf demanding the removal of your personal information from their databases. Say you've signed up for a free newsletter, for example, only to be bombarded with spam from unknown senders. With Incogni, bid farewell to unwanted emails and restore peace to your inbox. Their expert team will swiftly reach out to data brokers ensuring your personal information is scrubbed from their databases to prevent further spam intrusions. Or after researching a medical case, you suddenly find yourself bombarded with ads and promotions from services you've never visited. Don't let your browsing history dictate your online experience and let Incogni step in to protect your privacy by removing your personal data from data brokers, giving you the freedom to browse without being haunted by irrelevant ads. Stop being a victim of privacy invasion. With Incogni, your personal information stays where it belongs, with you. Secure your digital footprint by clicking on the link in the description below and the first 100 people get 60% off by using the promo code Pablito. Now, let's get back to finding out what the original owners of the unit offered to the new owners. The original owners offered $600,000 to the fortunate buyer as a reward for returning the rest of the money. After some negotiations, the original owners increased their offer to an impressive $1.2 million. After some consideration, the new owners decided to accept the offer put forth by the original owners. This decision meant they would walk away with a generous sum of $1.2 million, marking an extraordinary return on their humble $500 investment. Dotson, reflecting on the situation, expressed his understanding and support for the buyer's choice. Considering the substantial amount of money involved, Dotson recognized the challenges and risks of handling such an enormous sum. He also hinted at potential concerns surrounding the legitimacy of the money in the safe, which might have influenced the buyer's decision to accept the reduced offer. The buyer was pretty smart, because if movies have taught us anything, it's that money found in a safe isn't always safe. Number 4. House of Money Spanish man Tono Pinero made a surprising discovery in the walls of his new home. Pinero was remodeling his new home when he discovered canisters filled with cash in the walls. The former Spanish currency he found was roughly 9 million pesetas, which amounted to roughly $58,000 in value. It had been sitting in Nesquik cans for years. Unfortunately, most of the pesetas were no longer accepted by the Bank of Spain as those versions were phased out in 2002. The banks had offered a deadline to exchange and update the currency, but Pinero came upon the stash far beyond the exchange date. Since he couldn't spend the money, Pinero decided to trade and sell as much as possible to collectors. He managed to sell enough to pay for a new roof for his property. Before Pinero purchased the property, it had been uninhabited and neglected for four decades. A prolonged period of abandonment suggests that the previous owner, Manuel de Zentes, had hid his fortune in the house's walls before the house was vacated. Zentes worked at a local brick factory and was a cattle dealer. 
According to his old neighbors, he used to store his cash in farm machinery. When he sold the machinery, he must have moved his money into the walls, having accumulated significant wealth over time. After his story received media attention, an architect named Pepe Cruz expressed interest in acquiring part of the trove of banknotes. Cruz was particularly interested in the six models of the series of 200, 500, 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, and 10,000 pesetas, which were originally designed by his father, Jose Maria Cruz Novillo. Cruz's father had bought banknotes from the first batch issued by the Bank of Spain, but many of them were stolen in the 1990s or damaged by humidity. Cruz wanted to recover these banknotes as an archive fund for their studio. Number three, Operation Venetic. In July 2020, Operation Venetic dismantled organized crime groups utilizing EncroCat, a secure mobile phone instant messaging service used to coordinate illegal activities. EncroChat was one of the largest encrypted communications providers and had roughly 60,000 users worldwide, with 10,000 of them living in the UK. The service allowed criminals to coordinate the distribution of illicit commodities, engage in money laundering, and plan retaliations against rival criminal gangs. Operation Venetic confiscated $65 million in cash, two tons of Class A and Class B substances, 28 million unprescribed pills, 55 high-value cars, and 73 luxury watches, as well as an entire arsenal of firearms. EncroChat offered encrypted information channels where evildoers could exchange messages securely. The phones came preloaded with apps that enable voice-over internet protocol calls and instant messages. The devices also had a functionality that allowed users to wipe the data on on their devices remotely. However, the phones had no other smartphone functionality and cost users $1,850 for a six-month contract because apparently even criminals can't escape contracts. French and Dutch law enforcement played a crucial role in bringing down EncroChat. They hacked the system and accessed all the messages and communications related to drug and arms deals. Authorities shared this information with other law enforcement agencies and analyzed millions of messages and hundreds of thousands of images. They used this information to identify EncroChat's users, including middle tier and upper echelon criminals, kingpins, or organized crime gangs. When French authorities discovered EncroChat servers, the communication company realized a breach in their system. It urged users to dispose of their phones, which were expensive and only worked with other EncroChat devices. With the help of European law enforcement, British police conducted seizures across the country where they obtained more luxury items, money, and illegal goods. The value of all the items in cash they seized was over $91 million, with a single raid yielding $8 million, bucks, the largest in Scotland Yard history. Additionally, the information extracted from EncroChat allowed a specialist team with the National Crime Agency to prevent kidnappings and retaliations planned by rival gangs, mitigating 200 threats to people's lives. Over 700 people were arrested because of Operation Venetic. Number two, money and music. Piano tuner Martin Backhouse made a surprising discovery while cleaning a piano. Underneath the keys was a hidden cache of gold coins that dated back as far as 1847. The piano's owners, Graham and Meg Hemmings, were unaware of the 913 coins inside the instrument for the 33 years they owned it. The Hemmings used the instrument to teach their children how to play the piano during the 1980s. The piano played well enough for teaching purposes, and the coins seemed to have no effect on the sound. The couple donated the piano to a local school, and since they weren't the legal owners at the time of the discovery, they weren't entitled to any portion of the fine. The funds were divided between Backhouse and Bishop's Castle College in England. The college hired Backhouse to tune the piano, which it appears made him entitled to a share. The coins needed to be valued by the Treasure Valuation Committee to determine their worth in today's money. The face value of the coins was 773 pounds back then, which would be the equivalent of roughly half a million pounds in today's money. Although Graham and Meg Hemmings saw no issue with the piano, sound, Backhouse immediately knew something was off with the keys. Backhouse discovered the 913 coins while working on the piano. He'd noticed that some of the keys were stiff and decided to investigate further. So he removed the keys and found something underneath the keyboard. Initially, he thought it might be moth repellent, but upon touching it, realized it was something different. Backhouse lifted a cloth package and was surprised by its weight. He examined the package closely and noticed that it was well-stitched. Using a penknife, Backhouse opened it and found what appeared to be 
the gold coins inside. He didn't examine all of them, but knew he'd made a significant discovery that they seemed to be very old. He recognized the significance of his find and reported it to the school authorities. The piano's original owners expressed their contentment with the outcome and had no expectations of receiving any financial benefit from the find. Graham Hemmings, a retired finance director, stated they were happy that the school would benefit from the coins. They were glad to know that the piano would be used for a good cause. The coins belonged to the button coinage of the British Empire, meaning they weren't exceptionally rare. However, the significance of the find lay in the size of the hoard, and it was the largest ever sovereign hoard discovered in Britain. While the exact results of the split isn't publicly known, the money would likely be life-changing for Backhouse, as well as improving Bishop's Castle College's educational endeavors. Backhouse planned to use the money to retire early to spend his time contributing to the church. If you're enjoying this video, be sure to stay tuned right here for our past release for more stories on surprising places cash was found. Number 1. Buried Treasure while excavating their backyard, Suzanne and Richard Gilson discovered a hidden treasure in their New Jersey lawn. The couple was in the process of renovating their 1920s cottage when they came across two cylindrical objects in the backyard. They had initially cast the cylinders aside as thinking they were weeds. Upon closer inspection, Richard realized they were tightly rolled wads of old $10 and $20 bills, amounting to $1,000 worth $20,000 in today's money. The bills were all marked as being printed in 1934, which Richard found odd as typically bills have different printed dates unless someone gets brand new ones the couple believe that someone intentionally obtained new bills rolled them up and placed them in jars for hiding there were many theories about where the money could have come from richard originally believed it was obtained through shady means but later suggested that a person who lost faith in banks might have buried the cash the person may have believed their money was safer in the ground where they could access it directly when necessary being in new jersey richard was lucky it was only money he found digging up his yard a tight bundle suggested that the person panicked and rolled them up very tightly. $100 worth of $10 bills was rolled up so tightly it was smaller than the diameter of a cigarette. Richard enjoyed the afternoon from the story. Neighbors he didn't know exited stopped by and he welcomed the widespread media attention. Despite the potential monetary value of the money, he didn't really care about profiting from it. He said the story was worth more than him, than the financial gain, and that even if the funds were worth double their estimated value, I wouldn't change his perspective. Here are a few of the strangest places people have found money. Number 9. Ninja Burglar Matthew Emanuel found a strange random box in his backyard in Staten Island, New York. At first, it seemed like an electrical box full of wires, but it was something else. It turned out to be a safe that was filled with thousands of dollars in cash as well as bags of different types of jewelry as well. Emmanuel had wondered for years if the big piece of metal that stuck out in his backyard was something that was actually worth his attention. It wasn't until a deer ate most of the leaves off the trees that surrounded the back of his house, taking away the much-needed privacy. Emmanuel hired a landscaper to plant some bamboo to regain the privacy. But the box was in the way, so something finally had to be done about the box. When the landscaper dug it up, he discovered that it was actually a safe. They pried it open, and they were surprised to find several wads of cash and lots of bags of jewelry. Emmanuel counted the money and discovered that he had almost $52,000 buried in his backyard for years. But how did it get there in the first place? He discovered an item that had an address written on it. To his surprise, it turned out that the address was to a neighbor's house just a few feet away. He decided to drop in unannounced and asked them if they had lost or had been victims of a robbery. His neighbors described exactly what was missing, and Emmanuel brought them to his backyard showing them their safe. In 2011, Emmanuel's neighbors were one of the houses robbed during a highly public series of robberies that happened in the area. The robberies were done by Robert Kostansko, who was nicknamed the Ninja Burglar by the press because of how many robberies he was able to do. Kostansko was finally caught in 2016. He admitted to investigators that he was responsible for more than 100 burglaries in the area where he stole more than $4 million worth of other people's property. Number 8. Blue Drums In 2015, Colombian farmer Jose Mariana Cartolos was digging a trench on his property when he hit something weird. He found several large, big blue containers packed with cash. When you're in Colombia, you know exactly where that cash is from. 
he found a total of roughly $600 million in cash. The question you're probably wondering is, did he get to keep it? The answer is no. The Colombian government confiscated it even though it was on his property. Any money found that was clearly Pablo Escobar's is being used by the Colombian government to enhance social and economic programs for the country. Theoretically, anyway. Anyone that watched Netflix's Narcos knows that in Pablo's heyday, he was easily pulling in millions of dollars a day. Supposedly, it was as much as $70 million per day. At one point in time, supposedly a fifth of all $100 bills in existence were buried in Colombia. All that money had to go somewhere, so Escobar simply just buried a ton of money all over Colombia, whether he owned the land or not. Cartolo's family has owned the land where he found Pablo's money for almost 200 years. To this day, the Colombian government is still trying to find the hidden cash to Pablo's empire. Because there wasn't exactly a treasure map that Pablo left for anyone. Number 7. Valuable Cans In 2008, Arizona couple Serena Jennings and Clinton McCallum were in for a shock of a lifetime. They discovered half a million dollars cash hidden inside their kitchen and bathroom walls. Technically, they weren't the ones who found it. The contractor they had hired to do some remodeling in their house found the different cans of cash hidden throughout their home. The company owner actually tried to keep the cash. He didn't want to tell the homeowners, but his employee had already told the homeowners about finding the cash. Jennings and McCallum wanted to keep the money themselves, of course. And that's how the dispute began on who should keep the money. Police eventually got involved and then they seized the money. The legal battle that started after the discovery is worthy of a movie. It became a giant finders keepers debate. Both parties argued for their ownership of the cash, but the court actually didn't give either of them the money. That's because during their investigation, they found a third party involved and ruled in favor of them. The original owner of the house was Robert Spann. He had left his house to his two daughters, Kim and Karen, both of them very much alive at that time. They knew about their father's habit of hiding valuables. Spann had a tendency to hide stocks and bonds, gold, and cash throughout his house. After he passed away in 2001, the sisters decided to do a close inspection into his house to find all the things they knew their dad was hiding. Over the next seven years, the women found several cans full of cash and gold hidden throughout the house. But for some reason, looking inside the walls was something they never did. The court ruled that the money ultimately had been misplaced and was never technically abandoned. The Span sisters were ultimately able to keep what was rightfully theirs. However, the new owners did file an appeal, and the court still made the same ruling. Number 6. Good Samaritan Glenn James was walking around a Boston strip mall on a random weekend back in the summer of 2013. That was when he found an abandoned black backpack. He decided to take a peek inside just to see if he could find any identification so he could turn it in. However, when he peeked inside, he found something that he did not expect whatsoever. That's because he didn't think anyone would leave $2,400 in cash, a passport, and almost $40,000 in blank traveler's checks just laying around. Jackpot, right? Especially for James, who was homeless at the time. No, not so fast. James was really looking inside the bag so he could help give it back to the rightful owner. And that's what he did. James took the unexpected route of notifying the police about what he found. Police were able to track down the owner, a student from China who was visiting the US that summer. The police themselves were really surprised by James's gesture, so much so that Boston Police Commissioner presented James with a special citation and a plaque for his honesty. But that recognition didn't help James's tough living situation out at all. That's not until a Virginia man, Ethan Whittington, heard about the news. He was touched and amazed by James's honesty, and he wanted to help him out in the best way that he can. He set up a GoFundMe for James, and in just a few days, more than 4,000 people from all over the world donated over $100,000. Ultimately, the GoFundMe raised roughly $165,000 for James. Whittington's main interest was to help James get back and stay on his feet. He wanted James to be financially stable and not just for a period of time. Money wasn't the only thing that James got. Other people donated things such as free dental care and free counseling to help him to find and keep a job. Number five, percentage rules. 
Some people resort to pretty extreme ideas to make sure they're putting money in a safe place. One man from Sydney, Australia, was exactly like that. He wanted to keep his money as safe as possible. So he decided to put it in the safest place he knew, which was the oven. What happened next was so embarrassing to him, he didn't want to be identified by the press. In July of 2012, the Australian man sold his beloved Toyota Supra for the equivalent of 15,000 US dollars. He was planning on using the money to pay off his mortgage, so he wanted to keep the money as safe as possible before he went to the bank. That's when he got the not so bright idea of putting the money in his oven. He thought it would be fine because he never used the oven and he never saw his wife using it either. But surprise, his wife did use the oven, although rarely. His wife randomly decided to cook some chicken nuggets in the oven that exact day he had put the money in there. She was preheating the oven and that's when the oven started smoking excessively. Since Australian currency is made of plastic, the bills melted together in a colorful, gooey mess. Although this easily could have been a sad story, his bank was willing to replace the burnt money. What he had left in the bills met the requirements of the Reserve Bank of Australia on damaged and incomplete banknotes. The rules are, if less than 20% of a banknote is missing, the full face value on the note is paid out. However, if it's between 20 to 80% of the note missing, the value is paid in portion with the percentage remaining. If more than 80% of the note is missing, nothing is paid out at all. Although this man's bills were burnt, luckily for him, the bills were still more than 80% intact. Number four, Midas Touch. Walter Samasco believed in gold. When his house was being cleared for sale after he passed away, Carson City Police in Nevada were extremely surprised to find millions of dollars worth of gold bars and coins in a very normal looking house. Maybe even more surprising is the fact that Samasco passed away with just $200 in his bank account. No one had any clue that he was actually rich. Samasco was known to be quite a homebody who didn't go out much. It took around a month for neighbors to notice that they hadn't seen him for quite some time. And that's when they decided to notify the police who discovered that Samasco had passed because of a heart attack. As his house was being cleared for sale, that's when officials found dozens of gold bars and coins. The gold coins were dated from the mid 1800s from places all over the world. The combined value of the gold bars and coins amounted to around $7.4 million. But why didn't he do anything with them? Or what was the reason to just have them around? Apparently, Samasco seemed to be a bit of a conspiracy theorist. He had no belief in the government, and he supposedly also avoided doctors because he didn't believe in modern medicine. The gold wasn't his only investment, though. Even though he had just $200 in his bank account, he had over $165,000 in stock accounts and an additional $12,000 cash in the house. So who ultimately got the money? His first cousin, Arlene Mangdans, a substitute teacher from California, was found to be the only heir of the fortune. Number three, the wrong fit. In 2013, Rabbi Noah Murrah from New Haven, Connecticut, bought a desk on Craigslist for $150. He and his wife loaded the desk into their minivan and drove home. However, they couldn't get the desk inside a narrow doorway for the room they wanted their new desk in. This is when they decided to take apart the desk, even though they really didn't want to. The desk was too big by just half an inch, but they went ahead and did it anyway. When they took off the two filing cabinets that were attached to the desk, they unexpectedly discovered a plastic bag. The plastic bag was tucked away behind one of the drawers and it was totally inaccessible unless the desk was taken apart. Inside the bag were a bunch of bills that added up to $98,000. Murroff and his wife decided to call back the lady they bought the desk from and tell her about what they had found. She was shocked that they called to try to return her cash. It turns out the money was an inheritance that she had tucked away in the desk, but she had simply completely forgotten about. Murroff and his wife drove to give the lady her money back, but not without taking their four kids with them so they could learn an important lesson. Although the Muroffs were adamant about not receiving any type of reward, the woman decided to give back their $150 they paid for the desk in return. Number two, covert operations. In Lagos, one of the largest cities in Nigeria, the director of the National Intelligence Agency, Aoki, was found with 43.5 million US dollars in cash in an apartment his wife owned. 
The cache was sealed in plastic and was hidden in filing cabinets and behind hidden panels. Nigerian President Mohamedou Buhari ordered a detailed investigation since he was elected because of his promise to clean up government corruption. The money was found inside filing cabinets wrapped in plastic and securely tucked behind some panels in a wardrobe. Oki actually claimed that the money was going to be used in a covert operation. The money was only discovered by Nigeria's Economic and Financial Crime Commission officials after someone had reported that a suspicious woman was seen moving giant bags in and out of an apartment in the building. But the Nigerian president also received a lot of criticism because supposedly he would only arrest and prosecute Nigerian officials such as Oki from the opposition party. The million dollar question is where the $43.5 million came from. And how was Oki's wife able to get over $1.5 million to buy the apartment in cash as records had shown? Oki was ultimately fired after it was discovered that his wife had bought the apartment using government funds that Oki had access to. Do you know if Oki was ever found guilty for stealing? Number one, false bottoms. Smuggling a lot of money is hard. And it's especially hard to smuggle almost 150,000 euros in cash in shoes. That's exactly what one unidentified Dutch woman did in Colombia. Back in 2016, Colombian custom officials discovered a Dutch woman was carrying around 150,000 euros in four different pair of high platform shoes. Each shoe had a double bottom and a high platform. That's where she inserted the euros in 500 euro notes. She was also carrying 6,000 euros in her handbag. She might have gotten away with her smuggling, but it was only because of her suspicious behavior that agents decided to pick her out for a random search as part of an anti-money laundering prevention program in Colombian airport. Quick to watch one of these next videos. Let us know in the comment section what you would actually do in real life if you found $10 million cash buried in the ground. Some things to think about are how you'd be able to realistically spend the cash to any repercussions of taking the money.